So I've spent over a week with the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360. We're going to look at more performance benchmarks, answer some questions that y'all had in the comments of the original release video, and we're going to look at some things that I love, some things that I don't love, as well as looking at the 15-inch model from last year, the Book 2, versus the 16-inch model. Now let's kick things off by looking at the trackpad and what a difference we are seeing in the size of the trackpad from the 15-inch Book 2 to the 16-inch Book 3. It is just night and day. This was a big trackpad, I thought, when the Book 2 was initially released, but watch out for the Book 3 because it's even bigger. Now, one thing you'll notice between the Book 2 and the Book 3 also is they have this nice rounded beveled edge around the bezel of the screen. Now it's gonna cut off a tiny bit of information around your windows when you have them open. However, it's nothing substantial. It's not gonna remove anything that you need. But I did notice that it cut off a little bit of information versus the standard squared off look that most laptops have. And the Book 2 is no different. Today is the final day to go to samsung.com and get a $50 credit back when you purchase the Book 3, any of the Book 3s, and you get a free storage upgrade from 500 112 gigs to one terabyte of storage. So today, February 16th, is the last day to snag that deal. Head down in the description below and click those links if you want to check it out. Now, after that point, you can still buy it on Samsung or BestBuy.com or wherever else it is available, but today is the final day to get that free storage upgrade. Now, there's no changes to the keyboard between the Book 2 and the Book 3. They're the exact same. The biggest difference is going to be the much taller laptop, since it is now a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and the much larger trackpad. The weight and thickness is very similar on these two. The thickness is almost the exact same. The 16 inch gets just ever so slightly thicker. There's a little bit of ridge there as I slide my finger across, um, but the weight is very, very similar. You can see we gain almost a whole inch here on the height, and then let's check the width. The width, I think, is the exact same. Yeah, so the width is the exact same, but the height of the laptop is almost a full inch bigger. Now, as you can see on the Book 2, fingerprints are very popular. And on the Book 3, that's pretty much the same thing. So make sure you bring like a little microfiber cloth with you if you have oily fingers like I do. Now this is not the full dedicated review between the Book 2 and the Book 3, but I do wanna point out one more thing. You get three USB type C's and a micro SD card reader plus a headphone jack on the Book 2. Whereas on the Book 3, they add in an additional HDMI as well as a USB type A. However, they remove a third USB type C for this type A. Personally, I like that because I have a lot of devices that still use USB type A. So I like that that wasn't completely removed. However, I wish they would have just added the USB type A and kept a third USB type C. Now, one thing that has been taking me a little bit of getting used to is how the trackpad is offset from the center of the entire laptop. This is very popular to do when there's a numpad on the laptop. My Asus ZenBook is the same thing and I just, I'm still getting used to it. It's not my favorite. I personally like trackpads being centered even if I had a numpad because I often then am like shifted over to this side of the laptop being a right-handed user. If it was over here, it would make more sense. I could be running my keyboard, maybe doing shortcuts and creator apps and then having my hand comfortably set for my trackpad. I always kind of feel like I'm reaching under my hand if I'm trying to do shortcuts or just type while using the trackpad. So just keep that in mind that it is slightly shifted over to the left um, and it's something I personally am not a huge fan of. Now is there a 14 inch version of the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 with the 2-in-1 capability and touch screen? It is not available in the 14 inch model. If you want a 14 inch model, you'll have to get the Book 3 Pro. Now this is still a great option because you'll actually save some money on the model, not being a two-in-one laptop and not being a touchscreen and still get that powerful i7-1360p processor. So if you're somebody who doesn't need a touchscreen and doesn't need two-in-one capabilities, I would definitely recommend going with that. And also, if you want a 14-inch model, that would be a great option for you as well. And now remember, links are in the description below. So if you're watching this video on the day of its release, the 16th, the sale is still going on. But if you're watching this after the 16th, that sale is no longer going on, but you can still grab the laptop and check the live pricing using the links in the description below. Now, fan noise was something that they controlled very well while still giving good performance. Now, running Cinebench R23, which pushes the processor to its max limit, I saw 43 decibels of fan noise during the multi-core test unplugged from the charger and about 30 decibels of fan noise during the single core test 
unplugged from the charger. Now I had somebody in the comment section ask to run R23 both on battery power and plugged into the charger, and you can see those results coming up on the screen. For multi-core, it actually didn't make a big difference. It was very nominal. However, for single core performance, you're gonna get more performance out of the CPU by being plugged into the charger, not on battery power by about 350 points. And while we're talking about the performance benchmarks, let's cover a few more of those. Now, as you can see in Geekbench single core and multi-core, we saw good scores improving over the book two from last year's model. Nothing, you know, blowing us away, but definitely some improvements. Where we saw the most improvements was in Cinebench R23 from the book two to the book through, going from the i7-1260P to the i7-1360P. We did see a bump in performance. Nothing crazy though. However, as we got into video editing, we did see a substantial performance by about a one minute improvement on the export time for 4K export out of Premiere Pro. So that was a cool improvement to see. If you extrapolate that, that was a nine minute 4K clip. Let's say you have a 30 to 45 minute video editing project you're working on. That could end up saving you quite a few minutes on the export time. Now this isn't like going from an i7 you know, 1260p to an i7 13700h. And what I mean by that is a low power draw CPU to a high output, high power draw CPU. We're basically just moving up an iteration in the exact same CPU SKU, and they haven't made any crazy developments from 12th gen to 13th gen. So it is nice to see a bump in performance, but I really didn't expect even this much bump in performance. So I was happy to see this improvement. Now for DaVinci Resolve, we also saw about a one to two minute performance improvement for 1080p. It was a four minute and 23 second export. And for 4K, it was 14 minutes and 17 seconds on the export time. I'm gonna have a lot more benchmarks coming out on the channel soon, so make sure you stay tuned and you don't miss out on those. I just tried to get as many as I could for this short review. I know a lot of you were asking questions, so I wanted to get another review out faster. It would take me a lot longer to get my full review out, so just wanted to serve you guys where I could. Okay, next is gonna be the color gamut range. We saw good brightness at 412 nits of screen brightness. This is a 2880 by 1800 screen. We saw 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E. Punch for Punch, the new Book 3 is a fantastic laptop for light video editors, graphic designers, photographers, and digital artists. They fixed that flex that I was driving me crazy on the Book 2. As you can see here with the Book 2, it's just so flexy. I mean, look at that. It's just crazy how flexy it is. And the Book 3 did not have that. So a big improvement on build quality. Obviously, the larger trackpad is fantastic and the 16 by 10 aspect ratio ratio screen all while staying about the same weight and getting only ever so slightly thicker. Nothing earth shattering going from 12th gen to 13th gen with that i7-1360p, but it is an improvement, so that was nice to see. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase. Likes of this video has brought you some value, and of course, subs so you can help us reach 100,000 subscribers. I'll see you here in the next one.